There was a wedding feast at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Words taken from St. John's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Sister Catherine Labore belonged to a Catholic religious institute known as the Sisters of Charity. One night in July of 1830, at about 11.30 p.m., Sister Catherine Labore was awoken by the appearance of a small child near her bed. The child was literally shining brighter than the sun in the sky. The little child then led Catherine down to the chapel below, and for two hours she spoke to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our Lady was seated in a chair within the sanctuary, and Catherine knelt before her and placed her hands in Mary's lap. It was the perfect picture of mother and daughter. Eventually, in November of 1830, Sister Catherine Labore would receive yet another apparition of the Blessed Virgin. This time, Our Lady appeared to her as being atop of the world with shafts of light streaming forth from her hands towards the earth. Around our Blessed Mother were those words, O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. And from this vision, the church has received a very beautiful medal, an image known as the Miraculous Medal, which depicts Our Lady in this way. St. Catherine Labore eventually died on New Year's Eve of 1876. Her body is now in Paris, and it is incorrupt. That is, there has not been one sign of physical decay in her body. It's as if she's still sleeping. Her skin is still soft to the touch. Rigor mortis just never set in. One time, St. Catherine Labore asked Our Lady about the rays of light which issued forth from the rings upon her fingers. What did these shafts of light mean, and why was it that some of Our Lady's rings were not shooting forth the light? The light, the Virgin said, were the graces and blessings of her divine Son. And the reason that the rays of light were not always coming forth is because many do not ask for them. Let us therefore pray all the more O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Or we could even add that plea, that prayer of St. Maximin Kolbe, the great servant of the Immaculata, who added at the end of that prayer, and pray for all those who do not have recourse to thee, especially the Masons. Yes, Blessed Mother, send us the graces of your divine Son. Let us share in the salvation won by your child. And we ask this of you, dear mother, for you are the mediatrix of all graces and the blessings of your son, Jesus Christ. You are she who stands atop of this world as an instrument of Christ, as a special tool of mediation, pouring down rays of grace. Mary, you are not the water of life, but you are like the faucet that channels the water into the desert of our poor, dry souls. Mary, you are not the treasure of God. You are not the gold that is Jesus. But you are the treasurer daily distributing the riches of your Son. Mary, you are not the furnace of divine charity, but you are the ductwork of the warmth of God's love. O Immaculate One, you are not the bread of eternal life, but you are the ciborium, the monstrance, the very chalice that holds the body and blood of our Lord. You know, back in the year 1964, the most trusted man in television news was reporting live from Rome. This anchorman for CBS News, namely Walter Cronkite, was covering the events of the Second Vatican Council. Being a crypto-liberal, Cronkite was most pleased that radical change was in the air and that the windows of the church were open to let in the breeze of revolution. One priest I know witnessed the news report and claimed that Cronkite stated the following, quote, The Council Fathers of Vatican II have decided to downgrade the role of the Virgin in the Catholic Church. Downgrade. This report, of course, was at least partially twisting the truth, which the media often does. It was true that the cardinals and bishops, unfortunately, had voted against a proposal for a separate council document just for Our Lady in order to placate the Protestants and to promote ecumenism. 
It is also true that many council fathers, unfortunately, objected to Mary being called Mother of the Church, as such a title might be an obstacle to dialogue. At the same time, however, the recent council actually wrote more about the Blessed Mother than all the previous councils combined. Furthermore, Paul VI officially intervened with a papal act that publicly proclaimed Our Lady as being Mother of the Church. The council can be faulted for many things, for certain ambiguities, and even some unsound things which sound at odds with previously held positions. But when it comes to Our Lady, the council does sing her praises, calling her even the mediatrix. You see, Our Lady is the mediatrix of all the graces of her divine Son. That is, God has determined that every grace, every blessing from the one mediator, Jesus Christ, should come to us only through the blessed hands of his virgin mother. You see, Mary is the channel through which the Son of God flowed into this world. Mary is the very elevator, if you will, by which the second person of the Blessed Trinity came down to earth. She is that ladder, Jacob's ladder, that helped him descend to save human beings in this valley of tears. And as that great hymn of praise, the Tedeum states, Non oraristi virginis uterum. When the Son of God became man to save us, he did not shrink back from the chaste virgin's womb. Pope Leo XIII of holy memory once wrote, the price of our liberty, the price of our salvation, the very blood of Christ came to us through the womb of the virgin. Mary, in short, provides the very material for our salvation. Her mediation includes her consent to giving her divine son that holy flesh, that sacred heart, the most precious blood by which she would redeem the world. But Mary's role of being the mediatrix of all graces goes far beyond being some sort of incubator. A nine-month gestation period is not the extent of her special role. Our Lady is not just a physical vessel or womb. She is still the Savior's mother. She is still his special queen, continuing her mediation and her dispensing of the riches of her son. The great doctor of Mary, the troubadour of our blessed mother, St. Bernard, writes, All good, notice the universal term, all good should come to us by the hands of Mary. The great Franciscan, St. Bernardine of Siena, confirms this truth, stating, Every grace... Again, note the universal term. Every grace granted to men has three degrees in order. For by God, it is communicated to Christ. And from Christ, it passes to the Virgin. And from the Virgin, it descends to us. And as Pope St. Pius X wrote in one of his beautiful encyclicals, Mary is the dispensatrix, dispenser of all the gifts, and is the neck connecting the head of the mystical body to all the members. All the power flows through Mary, the neck. Countless more quotations could be provided regarding Mary as the mediatrix of all graces, but the proof is especially seen in today's Holy Gospel, the wedding feast of Cana. There was a wedding feast of Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. As we know, the wedding feast, a time of celebration, was about to become a bust, a disaster. The wine that helped bring life to the party had run dry. The party would be over. The bride and groom, the in-laws, the parents, all would be embarrassed and ashamed. And who notices it first? A woman does. For women notice everything. Our Lady then goes to the only individual who could actually do something about it. She goes to her divine Son, to the one who created the heavens and the earth, and all that is in them in six days. And interesting, there's six stone water jars that will be used. Six days of creation, six stone water jars to see a recreation in Christ. She goes to him who made the vineyards. Our Lady then simply makes an observation. 
it's all it takes. They have no wine. And from this little hint, this little act of mediation, the blessing of her son will pour down upon that wedding feast. As Archbishop Fulton Sheen once observed, water will then be brought before its creator and will blush and become wine. As Mary stood atop of the marriage feast looking out for the best interests of those involved and encouraged her son to make wine from water, so she stands atop of this world watching over us and saying her to, to her divine son, they have no wine, they have little or no grace. And from this act of Mary, the mediatrix, Jesus, the one mediator, will work his wonders. Our Lady will prove to be not only the channel through which all the graces of her Son flow to us, but also the mediatrix of all intercession, interceding for us here below. All our prayers and all the prayers of the saints in heaven, all the prayers of the angels in heaven, pass through the neck of Mary before reaching Christ the head. Whenever you pray, always offer your prayers to Jesus through Mary. Never pray to our Lord without inviting Our Lady first, for she is the mediatrix of all grace and all intercession. It is the way that God has ordered things. And her intercession, let me tell you, is omnipotent. It is almighty. It is unfailing. Our Lord, as we know from so many saints, our Lord literally cannot say no to his blessed mother. Her will is never opposed to his. To go to Jesus without Mary is prideful. It is always prideful for a child to go to the father without his son, without the mother rather. Bring our prayers and our good works to Jesus without the involvement of his queen and mother would be a very poor prayer and a very poor offering. By involving Our Lady, however, she will enrich our prayers. She will embellish our actions, making them more pleasing to Jesus. As the slave of Mary St. Louis Marie de Montfort once observed, he said, imagine a poor peasant wishing to win the friendship and favor of the king. Imagine he were to go to the queen and to give her an apple, his only possession for her to offer then to the king. The queen, accepting the peasant's humble gift, puts it upon a beautiful golden dish and presents it to the king herself on behalf of the peasant. The apple itself would not be a worthy gift for a king. But as it is presented by the queen in person on a dish of gold, it becomes most fit for the king. And so it is when Mary presents our prayers and our good works to Christ. As grace flows from us, or rather flows from Jesus through Mary to us. So let our prayers rise to Jesus only through Mary's hands. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.